Having a strong mindset is the number one thing in life. It's a good immigrant story, but I was like, no, I want more of that, you know, because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be American. The minute we think that we have arrived, game over. It's, it's, you're going downhill. You're going to perform at a higher level when you're looking at other people who are watching you. And sometimes being busy doesn't mean that you're being productive. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of the Phone Warriors podcast, where we are bringing you people that we know and agents that have done tremendous things in their real estate business and also personal uh, life. And so Rich and I are here and we have Eddie Oberoi from the Silicon Valley, California. Welcome, Eddie. Thank you, guys. You're too kind. Thank you for your kind words. Appreciate it. Good to see you both. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for being here today. Absolutely. All right, man. So let's go. I want to get into one of the topics that we have today. And, and I think it's it's one of the things that I've always, as soon as I met you, you had this aura of confidence and just a, a presence about you. And I think it stems from the topic, which is mindset. I know we talk, you know, it's been, it's been around forever. You know, we, we heard the word mindset, what does all, all that means? But, you know, can you, what is your definition of, of, of mindset and how do you look at like working on the mindset every single day um, going forward in, in your business and life? I feel that having a strong mindset is the number one thing in life, be it work, be it finances, be it relationships, be it dealing with obstacles in life. If you don't have the right mindset, you're, you're not going to win the game. And, and mindset is interesting because it's something you need to work on every single day, every single day, got to work on it. Uh, I think there's a quote from Zig Ziglar. Uh, he talks about, you know, yeah, motivation, you know, they say motivation doesn't last, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it every day. <laughs> so, so you gotta, you gotta do it every day, man. You gotta do it every day. And, and for me, um, just a little quick background. It's not something that I was born with it. I was struggling. I've been in the business for 24 years. 2007, eight happened, the financial crisis, and I, I had to file bankruptcy. Wow. I had the shittiest mindset. I, you know, I was drinking every day. You know, it was just like lost. But then I ran into this book, Miracle Morning. That just kind of changed my life because I it, it talks about having a good morning routine. And I think that's where it doesn't matter what time you get up, four, five, six, seven, doesn't really matter. But as long as you're just kind of breathing, you're calming yourself down, you're working out, you're writing down your goals, you're doing affirmations, visualizing, all that stuff can lead to a better mindset every single day. And yeah. So for, for, the last thing I want to do is get up, but then, then yeah, we'll, we'll keep talking, but go ahead, Deep. Yeah. No, no. So I guess the one question that I have, and I know, and we'll talk about your book in, 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 a, in a little bit as well. But one thing that I, I've always found interesting is, is your, is your immigrant edge, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and that's something that now, do you feel like that's an, that's a, it's a, it's a clear advantage that you have with everything and knowing a little, little bit more about your story from the book? Or do you feel like it's kind of like, oh yeah, you know, it's something that happened to me, but didn't define who I was with my mindset around that. Uh, that's a great question. Um, Immigrant mentality is definitely, it's it's very inspiring when I watch other immigrants and their stories and it, it just inspires me to do better. But I think in my case, it, it wasn't just that immigrant mentality because when mm. I came to the U.S., I was 16. I, I was just mad. I was just pissed because I was working in, in a restaurant and something happened which changed my life because I was, it seemed like my future was set. My brothers, they owned restaurants. I was going to work in a restaurant and you know, flip burgers or whatever I need to do. And, and, and that was my life and not a bad life being an immigrant, maybe become a restaurant owner. It was a decent life, but what worked with me or what pissed me off, which motivated me to do better in life was here. I am 16 years old. I'm mopping floors and I'm cleaning toilets and I'm taking shit from customers and I'm watching these other teenagers on dates having their burgers and shakes, laughing. And I'm like, wait a second. I, I don't think it had anything to do with immigrant uh, mentality because I was just pissed at that scene. Mm -hmm. I still get really mad. Like, dude, I'm not going to tolerate. I'm not going to be here. No, this is, not, this is not what I want. I want to be on the other side. I want to be the one fucking ordering burgers and laughing and going on dates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is not what I want. And... And, and I told myself, hey, I'm, I'm just going to really work on self-development journey. 
because I don't I you know being an immigrant owning a restaurant and having you know having a wife and kids not a bad bad gig it's good good life you know it's a good immigrant story but I was like no I want more than that you know I want to I want to be able to speak properly I want to be able to write books I want to do public speaking I want to polish myself I want to look good I want to feel good so that fire was ignited by that experience I don't think it had anything to do with the immigrant mentality because because most people who come as an immigrant they're they're not 16 they're usually in their 20s and 30s and then that's all they know they're like hey we gotta work hard but I was I was in a different situation I was 16 and I I just wanted to fit in I wanted to be white I wanted to be black I wanted to be Hispanic and I went through those phases you know because I wanted to fit in I wanted to be American so So that was the difference. So, so you're 16 years old. What did you do once you realized that? What did you do? Like, how did you change it right there and then? I, the funny thing was, it was just perfect uh, storm and perfect things would happen because during that time, Tony Robbins would come on television infomercials at night. I don't know if you remember those. I, you were probably really small. <laughs> you were probably what a year old. <laughs> But back in the day, it was very common infomercial. So he would be on for like an hour and I, I was like glued to the television. I'm like, oh, I like this guy. You know, he talked about self-development, self-improvement. And I ordered his cassettes or CDs back in the day. I somehow I saved a hundred bucks. I say, you know, I, I got those and I, I just started working on just, just improving myself, you know, uh, taking, you know, English lessons. I have a communication coach that I've been working with for the past 11 years. And we wow. still five days a week, we talk 30 minutes a day, you know, so because the goal is to take this, whatever I have going on to the next level, write another book, you know, do things like this. There's no way I could have done this seven years ago or 10 years ago. But now here I am talking to you, to you guys. I'm feeling very comfortable because I've done it so many times mm. and, I, and I'm willing and able to learn more. I want to, you know what I mean? I want to become a really polished speaker. So so yeah i don't know if that answers your question but and what made you did, did someone recommend a communications coach or how did you get introduced to that did you seek that out you're saying i, see, that I seek that out i seek, seek that, out. that out i i want i want a communication coach i want i want to be able to because i was very conscious when i was 16 there were mm. things happen in your life they stay with you right you know i was told i was dumb i was told i was ugly i was told i wasn't smart enough you know so those things are like they're big blocks right like oh my gosh maybe i am dumb maybe i'm not good looking maybe i'm maybe i don't deserve it right so th- those were really big obstacles when somebody tells you and you believe in it because you believe in it eventually somebody tells you you're dumb that's why you got to be careful when you talk to your kids you want to be careful because because i feel like uh verbal abuse is worse than physical abuse because it sticks with you If you tell a child, hey, you're dumb, you're dumb, you're ugly, you're ugly, it sticks with you. I still feel I'm ugly, <laughs> believe it or not, because it, wow. it stayed with me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, again, it's just the way people talk to me or when I was young, and things happen. So that's why it's super crucial to understand that it's really important how you talk to people, how talk, how you talk to little kids, especially. So, yeah, it stuck with me. And I, I was like, no, man. I'm not going to tolerate this. I need to get better. And uh, here I am. And how long did it take you to get better from 16, seven years? I haven't stopped. I mean, uh, man, it's, I feel like, and, and Dean, you've known me for a few years. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm changing every week, every month, every year, because I'm mm-hmm. polishing myself. I've, this is like, a, today I weighed like 166 pounds, 160. I've never been this light. You look it. You look great. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just, I feel like I'm improving every day in all areas because uh, the reason for that is, guys, I have, I'm spending $12,000 a month on different coaches. I just don't have a Mike Ferry coach. I have a business coach. I have a communication coach. I have a memory coach. I have Chris as a nutritionist and a physical trainer, you know? Wow. So I have all these coaches who I talk to on a regular basis and they put me on track, you know, they keep me wow. on track. And then you, And if you're talking to a communication coach every day, and if you are working out every day, and if you're eating right every day, if you're making your contacts every day, if you're role-playing every day for an hour, if you're doing all of the things and you go home, shit is going to happen, you know? So, so, so with that said, Eddie, so here's one, one thing that comes to my mind. And the, and the one part of your book that jumped out to me 
was when you were working those double shifts and you had like an hour of sleep, maybe the, if that, I think you just went the whole like yeah, night and you just kept yeah. going right back in yep. the early days. Yeah. So with that experience though, that clearly you had this moment of time in your life where you were able to figure out work ethic at the highest level, like, like borderline, like slave labor almost, it seemed like, yeah. but yeah. do you feel like with all the work, this is where I'm going with this, with this question is that you're paying 12,000 a month for coaches with all the work that you have to do with the homework from those coaches. Do you feel like if you didn't have that experience with all that work ethic, that you would still be able to do what you need to do that is recommended by the coaches in order for, for you to become who you want to become? Mm, good question. I, I don't think um, I would have been here if it wasn't. I, I would give my all this credit to my brother. Because hmm. when I came to this country, instead of, oh, let me get you a therapist. Let me get you a communication coach, Eddie. Here, have a seat. Take it easy. You know, no, he didn't do that. You know, I remember landing in Salt Lake City, March 19th, 1991. And we hang out till one in the morning. He wakes me up at seven, like, oh, what's up? Let's go to work like the very next day. And what he did, he made me work for like three months in a row, not even a day off. And by the way, I did not even go to like Safeway or Walmart. I was just working. That's all I did, worked and slept. And I, I cried. I, I felt like a slave. Um, but that was the best thing that ever happened because, because what it did, it was like eventually, you know, I got better at my job. In three months, I got better than people who were there in the restaurant for years. Mm. I'm like, fuck this, man. I got this. I, mm. I can do it. I can do stuff. And, and then it, it just, it instilled uh, the work ethics that you're talking about. But I didn't have that before coming to the U.S. I was a very lazy kid, not very smart, very average student. Mm -hmm. Wasn't good at anything, anything. Yeah. So that almost like spearheaded your ability to like see that in a short period of time. That exactly with the right work ethic involved, like, and, and that was the best gift that your brother, now, do you talk to him about it today? And do you laugh about it? Is it more like a, hey, thank you kind I, of I, thing? Or no, of course I tell him, I thank him for, you know, bringing me here to this beautiful country, number one. And number two, I, I, I thank him. And he read, the, he's read the book. He's like, man, I, I was rough on you. I'm like, dude, thank you. Thank you for being rough. Thank you for not, you know, giving me a therapist. Thank you for not, oh, Eddie, take it easy. Why don't you take a month off? Just relax, get to know the culture. No, like get to work. I love it. I, I call that hands-on training. That's awesome. Yeah. And training is the way to go. Yeah. How many hours do you think that you put into yourself to, for you to either become, I don't want to say um, a professional, but it, just like a professional, like in your field of what you do in real estate and in your personal life. How many hours a week are you working on yourself day in and day out? Because I feel like some people, spend 15, 20 minutes on themselves a week and some people put zero, but like, how, like, you know, did you put that 10,000 hours in for you to make yourself feel like, Hey, listen, I got yeah. this. I'm mentally strong now. Yeah. Well, there are two parts to this question. Number one, are you talking professionally or talking personally? Both because I feel like they blend together. Okay. I, I feel the same way as well. And this is when I talk to my team, I'm like, guys, forget about making money. Let's work on your mindset, your health and, and your skill set. Money will come. So I, I agree with you. Um, but I've been, I would say I've been spending anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week ever since I was 16, I'm 48, 32 years, 60 to 80 hours. And during the 60 to 80 hours, I, I worked, I got my MBA, I went to college, I got, I wrote my books, um, I filed bankruptcy, I worked on my body. So, but that's the kind of, yeah, basically 60 to 80 hours a week, at least, uh, for the past 32 years. Yeah. I am a little bit, I'm enjoying my life a little bit more now for the last four or five years. You know what okay. I mean? Cause it's always been a struggle. You know, before when I was 16, the struggle was I couldn't even speak properly. You know, that was a struggle, right? Uh, then I graduated uh, from college, Utah State University. I came to California. I couldn't find a job. That was a struggle. Uh, then finally, I got into mortgage business. That was a struggle in the beginning. And then 2006, seven happened lost everything that was a struggle i feel like we have never arrived the minute the minute we think that we have arrived game over it's it's you're going downhill because in life you've never arrived you can be like hey i'm going to retire in five years and uh i want to live happily ever after you retire you get a heart attack you know you got a stroke you can't even walk anymore i mean it's life is always a struggle 
And I'm sharing this because I'm not making this up. I know people <laughs> who have done that, right? They're like, oh, I'm retiring. Then they get sick or they die or they have issues like getting a di crazy divorce, going through a crazy divorce or kids being just dumb. And, and you know, they're, they're, life is challenging. So we've never, you know, uh, whenever you hear like, oh, I just want to retire and chill. Well, guess what, honey? You're never retiring and chilling because you may do it for a month or so. Yeah, but sooner or later, something's going to come up knocking on your door, be it health, be it your kids, be it a divorce, be it financial crisis, be it the economy, inflation, wars. And that's how I feel. So we have. So thank you for sharing that, by the way. That's powerful. Um, we have a lot of California people that are in the phone warriors group and also in the phone warriors community that prospect with us. I understand your average commission checks are pretty high, right? What would you say your average commission check is right now on average? Let's say 35,000, 35,000, right? So you have some pretty big months because I see the volume of deals, deal flow that you actually do now. Okay. So speaking around the complacency, which is what I'm, I'm, that's like the one word that's coming to my mind with people when they say retirement and everything else like that. How, what would your recommendation be for anyone that is in, you know, either a higher end market like that, that they get these checks or whatever, what do they have to connect to in their mind to keep on going when, you know, you have this like just river, I feel like of motivation and just like all these other things that are just driving you people, what they said about you, all these different things. So I guess the question is, what would you recommend to agents or people in general that are looking to be like, okay, well, I made a hundred thousand this, uh, you know, this month, right? Or, or I made eighty grand this month. For for a lot of people, that's a tremendous accomplishment in real estate. So I guess, how, what do you say to those people that are, want to keep on, uh, you know, going and they and they feel like I want to take take the foot off the gas now? First of all, you you have to know your why. Like what you know, if your why is you know, making a hundred thousand a month. And then once you get that check and you just take off for two, three weeks to Hawaii or sooner or later, it's going to catch up to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're going to run into financial issues because that doesn't last. Right. So you, you have to know your why. Um, and I had the hardest time knowing my why I just figured it out like four or five years ago. My why is personal development. I just want to keep at it. You mm -hmm. know, with Chris be with Mike Ferry, be it with, you guys be it with my accountability partners. I want to keep sharpening that ax. That's my why. And to answer your question, how to get rid of complacency, just one word, accountability. Mm. You know what I mean? Accountability. Like, I, it's funny when you logged in, I was eating and I, I haven't, I literally haven't had a chance to even go take a shit. I'm just like here. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm just here and just back to back my meetings and calls and now you guys. And, and I love it. It's called accountability. Right. Mm. You reached out to me like, hey, wanna, uh, OK, let's put because what it does is when I when I do these podcasts or interviews, it, mm. it actually helps me because it, it reminds me of what my purpose is. Right. So if you want to get rid of complacency, first of all, figure out what your why is and then set accountability, accountability around it, because I can say, hey, my why is self-development, but then I have no accountability. No, I have self-development, but then I'm spending twelve thousand a month. These coaches check in on me. Hey, Eddie, what are you eating? What are you doing? Are you making your contacts? Are you doing this? So kind of, you know, when you have that kind of accountability, you're not going to have complacency because you're looking at people like DK or, or, or John or Brian Burnett, they're killing it in, in every field. Like, dude, fuck this shit. I want to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think that accountability and, you know, you can swim, swim with the ducks or fly with the eagles, right? So you need to find some eagles around you. Mm -hmm it's right when they say you are the average of five people you most talk to. So mm. I think having that kind of accountability, not with just regular people, just people who are go-getters, like let's go. Because mm. when you're hanging out with those kind of people, then you would feel guilty not making your contacts or, or cheating on a meal or, and I, cause by the way, I do all of the above. I cheat on a meal. I don't make my contacts sometimes. It happens. It's life. We're human beings. Right. But, you're going to perform at a higher level when you're looking at other people who are watching you, you know, and, and you're held accountable. So accountability will kill complacency. Hmm. That's awesome. I, I love that. Um, Eddie, one thing that comes to my mind a couple of years ago, you probably don't know this. I, it, it's, it's funny that we don't know what kind of impact we have on people with just like one comment or like one thing that you interact with. And it was a group uh, text that we're part of this investment group that we're all part of. And that's how we got introduced to, to get it together. And I'll never forget it. It was, it was, it was, you had 
you were challenged by someone in the group to put in some extra money. I'm not going to say the amount, but it was a sizable amount, like sizable. And it was for anyone who's a realtor, you know, just hearing that amount and me seeing it for the first time, I was like, hey, just kick in an extra whatever it was. And the fact that you said, okay, I'll do it. What is the wiring instructions? It just had an impact on me that it was like, you were so well built with financial fortress almost to say, I can say yes if I want to in this moment, or I can say no. That was such a, a mental shift in my head to say that, to your point, like it's never, it's never, it's never enough. I feel like it's it's always this constant flow of continuously doing that, but you were put in a position to make that decision of saying yes to that sizable amount of investment that you didn't even want to do. And you were being baited actually in the group, if you remember, if you, I don't know, it's a little text there to like put more money. And so I guess around that point, do you like, do you have any fear around money? What is money? What is your relationship with money at this point? So my relationship with money is kind of unique. I think I don't see it uh, with many people and I'm not saying I, I know everything about money, but first of all, I made a commitment. I'll donate the majority of my net worth in my lifetime before I die. Mm. I'm not going to leave it to my kids. Cause if you're, there are two things, if they're good kids, they don't need your money. If they're bad kids, you can leave a millions. They're going to go bankrupt. Okay. So I don't, first of all, I don't have any, I'm like, I'm not the kind of guy who, you know how some people talk about, Oh, I want to create generational wealth. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like if my kids are drug addicts, I'm not leaving a millions. You know what I mean? And I don't care about my grandkids. Like that's their life. They got to figure that out. I'm not, I'm not here. Trump over here trying to uh, make sure that my next four generations are taken care of. I don't give a shit. They have, they have to earn it. So that's one part. Number two is I, I look at money like it's like a river. It, it, it's it, it's got to flow. Money has to flow. You can't hoard it. You cannot be like, hey, this big river, I'm just going to hold on to this much water. No, you can't do that. You got to let it flow. I am, I'm a big spender, um, especially when it comes to like tipping people, charity work, you know, um, let me see. And again, not trying to blow my own horn here but i must have given like half a million in the last 24 months and just donation and share and that includes everything you know like like when i go to mm. a restaurant if the bill is 50 bucks i'll leave 50 bucks and it's the smile on people's faces just amazing so mm. to answer your question my my relationship with my money is i have i feel like i have to give i have to keep giving it i have mm. to give it away i i literally give it away every day i would give away 100 200 dollars in just tips i feel good about it mm. you know what so my relationship is a little bit different i just give 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 and and it's funny miraculously i get 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 but that's not the point though i, I don't want to give something like oh yeah you give 10 bucks and you're gonna get 100 no that's not the goal the goal is to give because it just makes me feel good so my relationship with money is i i just definitely want to keep giving and keep expanding obviously Mm. Uh, and donate the majority of it by the time I die, but have but I have a really good lifestyle. You know, I I am a spender. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not your, you know, driving that old truck or living in a bedroom apartment. No, I have a really fancy lifestyle. I've got nice cars, and I I believe in having a good life. So I I do all of that. But how much money do you really need? You know, like it. Mm. Like I'm not I'm not looking to buy a half a million dollar car, or I'm not. I don't, that doesn't turn me on, mm. you know, we're living in a huge multi-million dollar mansion. It doesn't turn me on, you know, but I do live in a country club. I got a nice seven series and very happy, very content. And that's enough. Mm. And then I spent a lot of money on eating out and taking my friends out because I, I just, just giving, I, I just makes, and I feel like I'm selfish because it makes me feel really good. I don't know if that answers your question, but that's my relationship. But when you say it makes you feel really good, like when you give that extra money for a tip, or you give that guidance to a friend or you give the correct path to your team or what, whatever it is, like, how does it like really make you feel like, are you smiling on the inside? Does it want to just, you want to keep pouring out more because the recipient, you know, the recipient is just feeling it. Like, how does it like really make you feel like, I know it says it makes you feel good, but I feel like good is just very broad. Yeah, it's, it's, you're right. It's hard to describe the feeling, but, um, like I just internally feel like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making a little difference. I'm making, I'm putting a smile on someone's face, you know, I'm cause we don't know what people are going through in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you can make a little difference, um, it's like, Hey, why the hell not? You know what I mean? God has given us so much. And like last week I was, uh, with this lady, we we're doing some charity work and we we're handing out, uh, 
these gift cards for you know to these poor families so they could buy groceries and you know have a meal and i i noticed you know there was a two-hour line these guys are we're in the silicon valley by the way one of the most you know one of the richest places to live in the in, in the united states i mean people are wealthy I, average income is like three hundred thousand a year and in in, in in these pockets but there's a lot of poor people you know what i mean but watching these people and by the way the gift card is only 25 bucks yeah and there's people waiting for two hours and we had hundreds of them but just watching that is like my gosh you know we and we we spent 25 bucks on a drink you know uh so it's hard to describe it man but it just mm. feels it just humbles you right it it it's uh because you know half the time if you think about it people who make a lot of money they're they're half the time they're on an antidepressants they're depressed you know because they're depressed because all me 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 my car my house my kids and that's where they're stuck but when you just open your horizon and you look out you're like oh my gosh a lot of people are struggling and if you can make a little difference i think it's more powerful than than buying any watch or any 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 syndication or yeah you know. amazing that's, I mean, I really, that's a great question, Rich. And I think that's a great answer. Thank you for that, Eddie. And so the, and I guess the last two questions that I have, and Rich, if you have anything else, please, um, is, was there ever a chance encounter or an environment that you walked into without even knowing or something that really changed the course of your direction of your life that, um, you know, whether it be a person or an environment that you feel like really was like, holy smoke, this turns me on, or I'm just like, alive now and i can just go that you know was there anything like that that happened in your life absolutely i would say um running into mike ferry and our ecosystem and meeting people like you guys through mike ferry that changed my life you know what mm -hmm. i mean that really like going to that seminar 11 years ago and just watching all these people and i was sitting in the back and I'm like oh my gosh this exists because I, I felt like a little uh kid in a candy store because i i you know only certain people are going to be attracted towards shit like Anthony Robbins or or whatever Dale Carnegie or whatever right because we are we we can appreciate self improvement self development but running into Mike Ferry and having ex that kind of exposure like hey I can make a okay I can make a million bucks a year holy shit are you serious <laughs> and that changed my life because if I wasn't exposed to that if I was just exposed to regular realtors I would have been like oh two two hundred thousand a year that's more money than most Americans make that's great you know what I mean but I was exposed to mm. Mike Ferry and all these people. And now I'm like, why that changed my life. And then obviously the book, like American morning mm. we talked about, cause I wasn't, I was depressed. I was drinking, um, you know, I was just paralyzed, you know? So that book really changed my life. Do you yeah. still have your affirmations that you're doing? I do. Okay. Do you, I mean, I'm not, not to put you on the spot. If you say no, it's totally fine. No, no, I can Did do you it. Share the affirmations that you do because when I heard it the first time, I was blown away. Okay. All right. We can do that. We can do that. Right. We can. Okay. All right. So this is something I I do every day, twice a day. Um, mm. and this here it goes. All right. This morning, I'm counting my blessings and feeling so thankful for such a beautiful life. I'm blessed with my beautiful family, friends, accountability partners, mentors, coaches. Truly appreciate every single one of them. Just because of them every day and every single way, I'm getting better and better. My business is not a hobby. It's not a fucking hobby. I'm going to think bigger. I'm going to act bigger. I'll provide the best possible lifestyle to my family, provide the best possible deals to my clients. I'll do that by attracting the right kind of people in life, put me on the right path, the right track. They're going to help me become the best version of myself. They're going to help me become a better father, better human being, better person, better realtor, better negotiator, better investor, better businessman, better leader. At the end of the day, I do intend to improve. Every little thing I do today will help me create these perfect end results. I'll become close friends of the movers, the shakers of the world. I'll make a huge contribution in my community, many parts of the world. I'll close 500 units next year. I'll donate 200, 250K next year. I don't, I'm going to donate the majority of my net worth in my lifetime and getting in the best shape of life, six back tone body. Now I command the universe and my conscious of parts mind to give me help knowledge, wisdom, passion, focus, humor, whatever the fuck it takes to make this day the most exciting, most profitable, most productive, the funnest day of my life with that I'm complete. Yes, sir. Right there. That's it, man. That's it. Well, that was awesome. Thank you for that. I don't know if Rich, did you, did you ever hear that? No, I never heard it. Never. never. There you go, dude. Thank you for that. I, I just thank you for sharing that. It's awesome. Clearly, you know it. Um, and I guess the last question I have is what would you tell So you're 48 now, correct? In terms of age, body in, in, in the physical universe. What would you tell your, if you looking, if you could to go back in the time machine to your 20 year old self, 21 year old self, what would you tell yourself what you know now back then? Great question. And there are two answers actually. 
number one, I wouldn't change a thing because I am what I am because of those experiences, right? Mm. But if if I had given an option, I I would say, you know, be more intense. You know what I mean? I remember, you know, when I became a realtor, I was putting in 14, 16 hours a day. And, and sometimes being busy doesn't mean that you're being productive. You know what I mean? Intense. Like when you're prospecting, be intense about it, right? When you're doing open house, show up with intensity, right? And that's one thing I've learned after now I'm exposed to books like, you know, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss, right? That's what they talk about, you know, how to 10X. 10X is easier than 2X. So I'm exposed to this kind of stuff. I'm like, oh shit, I can actually do more in less time by having the right people around me and just being intense. So that's something I'm, I'm practicing right now because I don't want to work 14, 16 hours a day. I just want to work eight hours a day. And I, but I want to be intense about it, you know, mm -hmm. and then go home. So that's the only thing I would change, you know, just be a little bit more intense and maybe not, I didn't, I, I don't think I need to, I don't think you need to put in that kind of hours, but at the same time, it's a tough one because that's what makes me who I am, right? So especially in the beginning, if you're new, you got to pay your dues, man. I, I, I give this example, if you're 300 pounds and if you're trying to get in shape, you cannot just say, hey, you know what? I'll go to the gym for 30 minutes, 20 minutes. I'll eat right. I mean, it'll take you 10 years. You know what I mean? You got to be intense. Same thing. If you're financially, if you're fat, if you're 300 pounds, you cannot be like, hey, I'm going to make five contacts or 10 contacts or prospect for an hour. No, you got to go all in because you're, you're out of shape, baby. You got to, you got to go all in unless you're okay with that shit for 10 years. So mm -hmm. change, you know, you and I, we both know we can change our body in three months. We can change our bank accounts in three months and we can change our mindset in three months. So that 90 day cycle shit works. So I would highly recommend go all in for 90 days. Dude. Well, Rich, if there's anything else, uh, this is the time oh. to say it. Cause I think that's all I have for, for, for Eddie at, the, at this point. Yeah. I mean, listen, I'm truly blessed to be able to hear this, how in I hear the intensity. I feel, I can feel it through everything. Every word that you have said, I can feel it in internally. And I think everybody who gets to hear this is going to be truly blessed themselves. Um, so I just have two questions. Number one, we'll start with this is what's the name of your books? Where can you find your books? Yes. And how, how, how could they be able to reach out to you if they want to talk about your books or anything that, that you would like from that? Okay. The name of the book is wake the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of the book. And you can go on Amazon and just type in my name, Eddie O'Broy, because it's, you know, it's got that F word in there. So sometimes it doesn't really pop up. So just put Eddie O'Broy, the book will pop up. Uh, you can buy it on Kindle or hard copy. That's one. What was the number two question? How can they reach out to you? Reach out well, how to can you. They look me up on Instagram or LinkedIn or, or social media. Dean knows you can't get rid of me. If you're my friend, <laughs> in your you're, face. you're everywhere. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Look me up and then you can message me through Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook. Yeah. That's and, awesome, man. And uh, you talked about a lot and everybody's going to take a lot from this. But if you were to sum it up, just one tip, like one very short tip for them to be able to, you know, work on for themselves, no matter what course that they are in their life, personal life, health, journey, mindset. What would be your one tip that's basically a quick five sentence? I mean, uh, five words. I would say we human beings have so much power to do anything we want to do. Have you seen the movie Patch Adams or saw that guy, Robin Williams? As mm -hmm. a true story, I mean, this guy is like in his 40s and 50s. He decides to become a doctor. He becomes a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. like, I mean, we can do anything, guys. Mm -hmm. We can do anything. We want to become a doctor. We want to become an engineer. Even at this age, we want to make millions of dollars. We want to become a bodybuilder. We can do it all. But it all starts in here, right? So one thing I would say to people who are listening, and if you want to become wealthy or healthy or whatever the heck, set accountabilities, seek help. And by the way, you don't need to spend a lot of money in the beginning. You know, you need, you need to make money first. So if you, you're like, oh, Eddie, you have money, you can, that's how you can afford to, no, well, I didn't have money in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So seek people, set accountabilities, and then slowly step up your game. You know what I mean? Find the best possible coaches, work with them, find those kind of friends who are going to support you in your journey, whatever the journey might be. If you want to become fit, hang out with bodybuilders you know 
they're not they're going to keep you away from drinking that beer like no 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 you're not drinking it i have a show next week right if you want to make money hang out with people like you you know hey we're prospecting let's go so i think mm -hmm. yeah so just to answer your question yeah it's know what you want and then seek help because it's mm. not going to happen without help amazing dude eddie thank you so much this thank was you guys such a pleasure seriously you guys are awesome Grateful. thank you you guys inspire me let's keep up the good work and yes sir merry christmas Thank you.